Hello, I'm Carissa Sip, a product marketing engineer for TI. In the previous video, we discussed EMI and its effect on performance of your system. For your reference, let's review. In the presence of EMI, an ECG or EKG system with analog components shows a high offset while the transmitter is turned on for only a short period of time. Mitigating this offset error effect caused by or induced by the presence of EMI is a rather simple concept. In the op-amp world, we can protect our op-amps from RF fields by using our passive components, already internal to the op-amp as our best weapons. EMI filters at the device level are simply first-order RC filters inserted in series with the inputs of the op-amp. Though the concept is basic, Choosing the R and C values of the low-pass filter is tricky. The filter must have a high cutoff frequency beyond the gain bandwidth of the device so as to not adversely affect phase margin. The filter bandwidth also must be low enough to have an impact on decreasing EMI sensitivity. Adding series resistance must be done carefully as to not impact low frequency noise. Differential capacitance and parasitic capacitance also play a role in the filter response and vary with input device size. When the input filters are implemented after weighing all the design trade-offs mentioned, you have one robust EMI filtered op -amp. An example of one of TI's first products with, to have input filtering is the OPA333. With the integration of EMI input filtering, this device exhibits 10,000 times better high frequency noise immunity versus no input filtering. This means with the input filtering, one would have to increase the interfering input signal's power by 40 dB to see the same offset shift as seen before the design implementation of the EMI filters. Most recently, TI released the OPA378, a low noise, zero drift, low power op amp with EMI filtering. The EMI filter on the OPA378 creates over 29 dB of attenuation in the RF frequency range. This is superb for such a high precision device and enables this op-amp to be utilized in RF sensitive environments. I have already mentioned a few of TI's op-amps with EMI input filtering. I would like to take this time as we near the end of, to review these op-amps and talk about a few more. That will make your design easier if you are looking to save board space and cost and worried about EMI. In our portfolio of EMI input filtered op-amps, we have the OPA376. This is a 5.5 MHz device which has input filtering with a corner frequency at 75 MHz. It is a great low noise, low eye bias current, high precision op amp to use in RF sensitive environments. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we have the OPA378. This device is, has a gain bandwidth of 900 kilohertz and EMI input filters with a corner frequency of 25 megahertz. From our nano power family of op amps, we have the OPA369. This super low power device not only has outstanding DC performance, but also EMI input filtering. Another previously mentioned op amp is the OPA333, and it's relative to the OPA330 and the INA333. All these devices are members of our zero drift family and have EMI input filters with a corner frequency of 8 MHz. This provides world-class performance with superior EMI protection. These devices are ahead of their class in performance. Lastly, I want to mention the OPA334, 335 family. These 2 MHz devices are also part of the Zero Drift family. Not only do they offer low drift and low offset, but they also provide wide gain bandwidth and EMI filtering. Moving forward, EMI input filtering will be a staple in the op-amp design portfolio at TI. Thank you very much for taking the time today to finish up the second and last part of our brief EMI, RFI, and op-amp discussion. I invite you to visit www.ti.com forward slash elab to learn more about this topic and the EMI input filtered op-amps mentioned here today.